we uh, uh, evacuated the wounded and the sick from uh, uh, the, air, the whole beach bridgehead. Uh, the Navy were very, very good. They helped a lot. But they, we, we had uh, peaks and troughs of numbers, but the largest number we had, I think, was in a 24-hour period evacuated by the Navy was 2,200 and something, I think. When uh, you say sick, what, what, what were they sick with? Oh, just uh, any throat infections. I mean, we tended to send a lot back. But the depressing lot were the battle exhaustion. Right. You would get uh, people, warrant officers, sergeants, privates, with decorations from North Africa, uh, DCMs, and officers. MCs and so on, cringing in a corner or going under a bed. They were just shell shock of the First World War. Yes. And this was the most depressing uh, problem of the whole lot. Yes. And they were, they had been, they were very brave men. Yes. By this time war would have been getting underway. Well it was, I, I remember that in 1938, when was it? Yes. Anyhow, when I was a resident with, 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 uh, Will, with um, Illingworth uh, uh, and so on, that already Illingworth was starting to collect blood for the newly established blood transfusion unit. And I remember, if it was a simple hernial repair, he would ask the patient, would you mind very much, if, or would you care to give us a pint of your blood for storage in the event of needs of war and so on? And who did you work with? Stanley Davidson. And what was, what was that like? Oh, great. And what was great about it? Uh, he was a very dominant character, and uh, he... he was interested in almost everything, and he never took offence. You know, have you said anything to him? He, he, he never took offence. And uh, he, he wanted to try giving blood transfusions and things. We got very worried about this, but uh, he didn't mind us telling him what to do, because <laughs> he, he hadn't had much experience of this. I was sent at first to, to Dulali. It was a holding camp and anybody arriving or leaving India was supposed to go to Dulali. So there was a vast number of patients. And on the other side, on another field beside us, there was a 19th Indian Division forming up. Uh, but it was a very, very busy time. And I remember one, we didn't have many x-rays available, but I remember finding three cases of pulmonary tuberculosis one day in outpatients right. without x-rays yeah. and they just had to be turned back and sent home again. But how prepared were you for tropical diseases? I had a book <laughs> <laughs> and I'd had a two-week course. I'd, I, I went on a two-week course, yes. Right. And what drugs did you have? Well, we didn't have much really. You see, penicillin had just been, it was just being tried out in Britain. And I was, I had been told about it at Catterick by Colonel Leslie Cope, who'd been at Oxford, and he told me about this wonderful new substance, penicillin, which had been given to a policeman, and uh, was so precious that they extracted it from his urine, and then used it over again and gave it back to him. Right. And that was the first I'd heard of penicillin. Uh, but penicillin came in, and we got some of it uh, during the war in India and Burma.